single mom to four children. I have a, all, my oldest is a daughter. She's currently 27. Uh, great kid growing up. Love dancing, singing, typical girl, dressed in pink. Uh, son, year later, uh, he's currently 26 years old. No problems bringing them up, typical kids. 10 years later came twins, and right off the bat, we knew there was something different with the twins. My one boy started uh, probably around, I got a bug on my glass. My one boy started around probably six, seven months old, showing behaviors that was different from my other two children. His twin was developing normal, uh, achieving all milestones. My one boy, I want to share about autism. My one boy has autism. We did not know it was autism. I knew something was different with him growing up. Uh, from the minute he could pull himself up in the crib, he would pull up and start banging his head as soon as he wanted attention of any kind. Once we would get him out in another room, he would continue to bang his head to get our attention. Uh, he was not developing like his twin was. Uh, would not sit, would not crawl. Um, talking was non-existent. He was non-verbal. He was probably about six months old, nine months old, when we noticed there was definitely something different with him. Um, he would not crawl for me. Um, when his twin brother started walking, Matthew was butt-hopping. He could not pull himself up. There was a lot of muscular things involved also that just did not make sense to us. Uh, when he got mad, and this is at 11, 12 months old, whatever was in his air, in his range, he would literally just pick up and throw. So we had toys being thrown at us. Again, he's nonverbal. He's not allowed. To, he wasn't telling me he could, was upset over anything. As time went on, I had no family down. I, I brought the boys up in North Carolina. I had no family, close family in North Carolina. So it was hard to really get any help. We didn't know what was going on with Matthew. Um, it was probably when he was three years old, I went to a local college on my own because the doctor was telling me they're twins, they're boys, he'll outgrow it, he'll start talking, he'll be able to walk, all this. You know, the doc just wasn't on my side. Us parents know when there's something wrong with our kids. The doctor did not want to listen. I took him to the university, had hearing checked, thinking maybe he was deaf and that the moot could not hear us. Hearing all came out great. So they ruled out any hearing problems. They then went on to start, they started with behavioral therapy uh, and tested them in that area and it came across that there was problems, that he was not developing as a normal, uh, this was two years old. I moved back to Pennsylvania when the boys, my twins, were seven years old. My two older children were living with their father at the time. Uh, they needed physicals to start the primary school. Upon the examination of my one son with autism, they noticed that he was different. And they explained to me about what autism was. They immediately started having home services come to my apartment. And what home services is, it was a couple two physicians that would come to the apartment and sit down and work with Matthew, playing with games, teaching him. So we're here in Pennsylvania now. Matthew is seven years old, starting primary school for the first time. Uh, school immediately implemented what they call IEP, which is an individualized education plan. What that allowed the school to do was to put together a team to help Matthew work through his difficulties with his autism. He had a lot of sensory processing disorders, I'm sorry. He 
had a lot of sensory processing disorders, which what, meant, what that meant is if the alarm, fire alarm went off, he would cover his ears, he would crouch under the desk, he would run to the corner of a room during cafeteria. And this is prior to an IEP actually put into place because of all the noise in the cafeteria. He would not eat. He wouldn't. He would find reasons to leave the cafeteria. So he had a lot of sensory processing disorders that the IEP allowed him to be exempt. They would give him special lunch privileges, allow him to eat maybe up at the principal's office. When there was fire alarms, they would allow Matt to know ahead of schedule that this was going to happen, so Matthew was prepared for this. And this helped him out significantly. In the beginning, he was progressing pretty good. Um, as, they got the IEP, as they got the IEP in place, and the team members were working together with me as a parent, and including Matthew, Matthew was doing much better. So at Upper Moreland, he was receiving specialized skills for a sensory processing disorder, speech therapy, because at this time, he still was not putting sentences together. He had a lot of difficulty with talking. Behavior, it bullied. That's another big thing I want to talk to you about, is the bullying that comes with kids that are different. And schools say there's no bullying. There's not, there is bullying. Um, Matthew is, if we jump now to middle school, he is progressing well. He's getting all the specialized treatments he needs. It's still very difficult for him. Home life is still real difficult. Uh, he is going to therapy sessions. He goes once a month. We have medication management that he, uh, he does take medication for behavior. He continues to have outbursts. So school was able to help him with this by having therapy during his middle school years. And that, I think, helped Matt understand more about himself, what the autism is. That's when he really seemed to blossom, when school was allowing him to see who he was and how he is different and how he needs to work together with the other students. Social skills is another big problem with autism. They don't really understand social skills at all. The normal talking back and forth. Kids with autism does not do not understand. Growing up was kind of hard because everyone did not understand me. Um, my brain was wired differently than others, so everyone thought I just had anger issues or bipolar disease. And they tried so hard to um, see what's wrong with me, but no one could figure it out. So they just thought I just had bad anger. Um, I was getting bullied a lot. Um, most people, I told people, but they did nothing to do about it. The only way I could get it to stop was have mom um, intervene with the school board. Since people were bullying me and making my life hard, one way I dealt with that is helping other people and making their lives easy. The one blind kid, but I talk to him every now and then. He's my friend. We go out to the pool with, with each other and um, go to church together. Um, with other with people with Down syndrome, um, I played with them. Um, I pushed them on the swing they had indoors. I helped them have fun. And really, all the staff members they had could do was clean them up because they didn't have time for anything else. Uh, I noticed growing up that it was different with punishments and stuff. He would get less punishments than I would. For example, if I came home late, I'd be grounded for a few days. I mean, if he did something wrong, he'd be only grounded for a few hours. Another thing I was different with him, knowing he had autism, was bullying. A lot of times in school, I would see kids bullying him, and I would try to stick up for him. And even then, teachers did not get that he had autism. They wouldn't really try to help. And I was just trying to be there as much as I could for him. How you doing? My name is Joe. Um, I've dealt with autism throughout my life with uh, my little brother. 
Um, I am the third. I, I was the first brother born, and I have two younger brothers, which are twins, and we are 10 years apart. Um, I noticed when we were growing up, we lived in North Carolina, so things were a little different down there. The South was much more strict, per se, and they didn't understand things. Um, I noticed when they were born that Matthew was a little bit different. Um, we really didn't know how to take control of it. I was still young, so I was trying to comprehend the little things that Matthew would do. Um, he would, the little things like slamming his head up against the ground when he wasn't getting his way to, a, to the point to where it, it, we almost had to take him to the hospital certain times because he would do it so hard. And we, in the South, they just thought, oh, this kid just has a couple little problems. Nothing really is going on. Um, I moved out when I was 14. Um, I guess I just really, when I was younger, I saw different attention. I just, yeah, exactly. We couldn't take it. It was, it was much different. Um, so I decided to move out and move in with my father. And we eventually re got reconnected when my mother moved back up here. And by that time, Matthew was how old? seven. Seven. They were about seven when they moved back. And. You could just tell something was different with Matthew. His social talking. Socially awkward. It was exactly. It's socially awkward, and we didn't know how to deal with it. So as the years went on, um, we found out that he did have autism, and that he he's he's really one of a kind. You he he has one of these games. First off, he started playing. What, what, what do you think he, when he started playing Wizard 101? About 10? Probably 10. About 10 years old, he started playing this video game called Wizard 101. And he is amazing. He's like, has a certain number in the United States. And that's when we really realized, like, he's different. He's different because he specialized in so many certain things. Um, like, if you ask him what kind of frog, if there's a frog, he will know any frog that you point out. And the little things amaze you um, throughout the day. If you're just watching TV and you see some kind of different animal on TV, he knows exactly what it is and it amazes you. He just knows different things that you don't know. And most people will take that as awkward and that's not right, but growing up throughout the years, I just moved back in with them. Um, my mom had a stroke and a brain aneurysm, so I decided to move back in and help. And I really got to connect with Matthew and David. Um, but you see, you see him, and you see the tan the temper tantrums. You see lots of things that. That's how we're different. How it's different, and how to try and deal with it. Because if you don't know about this, then there's not a certain way to deal with it. Because when they go in to a certain rage or something, the littlest thing can set it off. And you, if you didn't know about it, you won't know how to deal with it. Are you a mom of a child with autism? Are you a neighbor? Are you a family member? Or are you just a passer buyer in the store? Know that autism is okay. There's nothing wrong with autism. What I really enjoy and appreciate so much is my neighbors understand the autism now. I wasn't afraid to tell them that Matt had autism. There's nothing wrong with having autism. It's no more than having appendicitis or high blood pressure or anything else. It's okay to let other people know that your child is autistic. Once they understand that and you let them know, it blossoms. It goes from there. Neighbors will not look at you like, oh my gosh, what a terrible kid you had. They will understand this is autism. Um, people have bullied me. Um, I was so mad at myself because it, it's like I could help being autistic, but really I couldn't. I was just mad and be in general. But um, then I reminded myself everything happens for a reason. And I want to help everyone else understand that autism is not a disease, it's a blessing. <laughs> I'm really hoping that when he graduates from high school that the workforce will treat him as well as the school is doing right now. I'm hoping they put in place for Matthew so his dreams can come true.
he has high expectations of becoming a doctor, maybe a veterinarian, a paramedic. He has, he wants to work with people. And for him to be able to work with people, people are gonna have to understand Matthew and allow Matt to be himself and let them know that he is who he is and he is great inside. Are we he, filming? Yes, we're filming. <laughs> <laughs> he is great inside and people need to see that on the outside and once they see that I have high hopes that Matt will succeed in the workforce am I scared as a mom yes I am very scared can you explain to him why you're scared you want me to explain why I'm scared I'm scared because the workforce isn't gonna understand your autism mom you're so smart. Go ahead, I'm listening. Autism is like a medical disorder, right? So if I get it, if I work at a hospital, they'll understand. You know that, right? I hope they will understand. It's like he has a job now as a counselor. They are really working with him to have his job and getting paid for it. This is his first real job this summer. And that makes me very happy as a mom, to see him succeed. I never expected him to have a job already. He is like his brothers. He is gonna explode. He's gonna show this world what he's about. And we as a family have to stay together, help Matt understand his autism, and we as a family understand autism and keep getting the support that we're getting now. And I think once that happens, it's going to be great. It's He's going to achieve so much. I would love to see him go to college. Matt surprises me every day. You could never really understand until you live with somebody that has autism about the things they can do and the things they want to be, their potential. It's, it's amazing. And through the ups and downs, no matter what, you, you just got to understand you got to stick with your family because family is number one. Blood is always thicker than water. And you have to understand that I understand that this is my brother. Like I'll stick up for him for anything. I mean, my other brother here, I mean, he, st he sticks up for him in school. He does whatever is needed to be done to just have people try to, the point is just to try and get people to understand. And that's just our main focus is, because this kid is freaking amazing and I love him to death. And I just want to see other families try and understand and just get what they're going through.